All I can say is, this does not drive like a supercharger. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We're recording, son. So me and Tommy are actually down in Essex, and we're down here with Greenlight. We've got a fun little project coming up. So in the office, they're all sat working, so I thought we'd come and take some of the cars out. This is one of three that I want to review. If we've got time, we're going to do it. But I want to take this one out first, because this thing is fucking mad. It may not look it straight away, but this is owned by Dave, the guy who works at Greenlight. And I used to have a Mark 6 ST and I absolutely loved it. The only reason I got rid of one was because it was too slow and it was a bit too small. Now, although this one isn't any bigger than the one that I had, this is a hell of a lot faster than the one that I had. Now, it's weird what Dave's done with this because he's gone for like a stealth sort of look with the power. So he's got a black intercool at the front. He's kind of like stealth that out and you couldn't really tell he's boosted. Yes, this car's boosted. But then again, he's gone for this like really large, like extravagant wrap on the outside. So it's kind of like different thoughts there. But this is, well, this is a mod list I've got for it. I've had to cover it over at the top because his, his name and address is on there. This thing is absolutely insane. It's supercharged, which is a lot different than you would put to like a two litre car. It's a supercharged Mark 6 ST, two litre supercharged, and it's running 411 brake. And holy shit, I just drove it on the way here. Fucking fast. Fucking, fucking fast. <laughs> it's fucking fast. I drove it on the way here. If we put down a little bit, just kind of gauge it. And this car drives insane. Well, we're going to get onto the driving. This is going to be dead easy for me because I had a Mark 6 ST. So with my reviews, I always like to do the interior, do the little fiddly bits, do the things which are weird, weird and quirky, and then go into the driving. I'm going to try and limit the weird and, weird and quirky bits because this is mainly how this car drives but we're going to go into a couple minutes of the quirky bits about this car and then we're going to take it for a spin get the gopros on and experience this with me because there's a lot to talk about it so yeah mark 6 st you've probably seen a lot of them about we've got the the rs wing now i'm usually not a fan of the rs wings on the fiestas but because the rest of the car is that extravagant it kind of fits in now the car is pretty stealth looking on the outside. You won't think too much of it. I didn't think too much of it when I first seen it. You've got the black cooler there, which is obviously hidden. Now the interior in this is insane. Like it's, Dave has had this car for over 10 years. He's done absolutely everything. Apparently the guys in the office are like saying this is his absolute baby. So thank you Dave for letting me take it out because I know that he, you know, it can be a bit issue with it. But look at the interior. He's spent so much time on this and push start. All the gauges fitting absolutely lovely. Everything's perfectly color coordinated. We've got the Recaro. What are the CS seats? Right, so the, the, the Recaro CSs, Tommy tells me that these come in the Mark 2s and the Mark 3s. Yeah. Yeah, and he's had them retrimmed and everything's just perfect inside. Now, originally I thought this car was black, uh, but actually it, it's blue. And the one thing that I loved about the STs over the similar sort of competition, like the Cleos and stuff, uh, was the interiors and these are so much nicer. The interiors and these are so much nicer than the other cars and like who would become like the Type R's and the uh, the Clio's and stuff. These are way nicer to be in. I always loved sitting in my uh, ST. The one thing I loved about my Mark 6 was the steering rack was unreal. I can't really put it into words, but it's so responsive and so stiff and such a good feeling. So I've drove this and it's exactly the same thing. And he's obviously done everything. Like the, the amount of big names on this car, he's got Cosworth in here, Cosworth Inlet, literally. I'll put all the mod lists in the description. I'm not going to go through it all now if you don't have time. But literally, he spent so much time and so much money on this, and you can actually tell that this is his baby. Now, it does have the little, mark, the, the little quirks that the Mark VI has. Uh, the crunch in reverse, I know that the, the Mark VI is notorious for this. It still does it now, even with the Quaife diff and the paddle clutch that he's got in this. It's still crunching in reverse, there's a little trick to, to bypass. If you go into first and then reverse, it doesn't crunch. And everyone understood why the Mark 6 do this, but all the gearboxes do do this. And the one thing which were absolutely horrible with the Mark 6s, the, the, the pulley things on the seats were awful, they used to snap all the time. And to be fair, this one doesn't even feel that much better. This one feels like it could literally snap at any point. Every time you used to get into a Mark 6 ST, almost every time they either had both or one of the catches on the seats snap. So it is starting to rain a little bit, so I'm going to try and limit this and get in the That's car. Ooh, yeah, baby! Well, this has got the fancy upgrades, which all the other professors do. Is they always put the Mondale brakes on the front and the Focus SD170 rear, uh, on the rear. It's got all that. As again, lads, uh, go and look in the description. The amount of mods it would... I'll be sat here talking about half an hour trying to list this car. I've been excited to drive this. Need some more fuel, which I'm going to have to text him what fuel goes in it. But 
let's go and get to the important part of the video, which is how this thing drives. So whilst we're driving to the fuel station, we need some fuel. I'm going to quickly go over uh, what I can remember that this car's got. So it's really 411 brake. It's got forged rods, uh, forged pistons, cams. It's mapped by Jamsport, I believe. Means we're going left here. I'm not sure what the gearbox is. I know it's got a quake dip in the gearbox. Uh, and I know it's got a paddle clutch. I'm not sure which paddle clutch, I'm not sure what play. Literally, we're, we're, we're a bit on time schedule here, so I've just said, yes, I want to take that car out, give it here, I want to drive it. What I can say is, this does not drive like a supercharger. Uh, a lot of supercharger cars I've been in, you know, you get a quick punch and you don't get much after that. This drive, if someone put me in this car, I would not say it's supercharged. I would say it's got a fat turbo strap to it because that's literally how it drives. They, you know, you, you don't get much and the boost comes in so late for a supercharger. See, even then we weren't on boost. It comes in at like 5K and oh my God, if you're in first or second, you've got to be ready because it will hit the limiter fast. Now in terms of modification lists, I think this is one of the most, if not the most modified car I've had on the channel. Uh, I didn't actually know that much about it. Dave is the sort of guy where he doesn't actually boast about it. He said, yeah, I've got a, I've got a Mark 6 ST, supercharged. Wait, 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 what? And then when I see the mod list, holy shit, lads, this has had a lot of work, time, and money spent onto it. Now, I've heard something before in the office that this is the fastest supercharged uh, S Mark 6 ST in the country. That's Tommy behind us in the DC5. Uh, don't quote me for that. I just heard it around the office. I didn't really question it because we were on our way out. But I can understand when this comes in boost. Oh my god, I still can't believe it's a supercharger. And it's raining, which is not what we want. <laughs> like, literally at the top end of. Oh, when you get to like five and a half, that's when the power comes in. Which is so weird for a supercharger. It's actually more boost laggy than a lot of big turbo cars I've been in. I used to say I was never a big fan of superchargers, but... <laughs> well, this is, uh, I think it's changed my opinion. Now, the noises this car makes are insane. You can't actually hear the supercharger whine that much. You can obviously a little bit, but because the exhaust is that loud, it kind of uh, dims it out. But the constant wastegate opening of the supercharger, Oh my god, it's cool, man. Like, this car feels so sick. <laughs> See how long it takes to go on boost? That was second gear. It takes so long to come on boost. I can't believe how long it takes to come on boost. <laughs> but this is totally against what superchargers stand for. Superchargers stand for not much power, a little bit of power increase, you know, comes in boost quick. This is a lot of power increase comes in boost late so this is very very turbo-esque everyone's looking like a dick so i've got a camera on my head you still get that responsiveness from the two liter range like a normal st does that like the, the quick responsiveness but it kind is kind of you know you do get that top end when i say top end it's right at the top end it's not mid-range it's not full ground come on like a turbo literally you get full boost at like five five and a half and i don't know what it revs out at dave did say to me that the revs are a little bit out so uh, where i'm thinking i'm not hitting red line i you know sometimes i do hit the red line but oh my god like first gear just sounds absolutely savage in it as well <laughs> to spin when it's a bit wet now i'm not gonna be able to test the handling that much because as i say it's a bit wet today and i don't really want to do that in the wet and it's really nice but see that wait 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 <laughs> yeah we're just wheel spinning in the minute <laughs> I've missed that front wheel drive terrifying experience where you know if you're not careful you'll end up in the side of the road you've got the car pulling all over the place you've got the wheels slip sometimes two wheel drives are you know maybe not the best performance wise over the all wheel drives but for fun aspect you know when you get a little 
little front wheel drive car like this it's got a massive boost like a then for an energy <laughs> although it does want to kill you a little bit you know it, considering you've got 400 wheel 400 horsepower going through two front wheels uh, in the wet you know, it's, it, it, it handles the power really, really, really well. I wish it was dry so I could give it the handling, but I really don't want to. It's got high back lowering springs, it's got loads of suspension mods, like wide trap axles, wide track stub axles. <laughs> now we don't have any like mad screamer pipes or anything like that, but it's loud when it comes on boost. Now, I feel like Dave's sort of guy that likes to keep things nice and clean and content, so he's not, he's not like me where he just shoves a screamer pipe once coming out of the bonnet and all that shit. He's doing it really tastefully. Well, maybe not the wrap. The wrap's a little bit out there. <laughs> to be fair, it's really weird because I've I barely even got out of second gear because by the time, because how late the boost coming in the revs, if you're doing that in third or fourth gear, you're going very, very, very fast. So I've literally hardly even got out of second gear because you, by the time you've literally boosted through second, you're near 60, 70 mile an hour anyway. So, oh my God, this is fun. The wind, the, this wind doesn't go down, which is very nice. I'm very hot. But it's literally just one of those cars where you don't know what you're going to expect. You know, in the Evo, when you put your foot down, you know what's going to happen. You're going to get all that power. You're going to go to a straight line, and you're going to get there quickly. But this is like, am I going to have enough room before the corner? Which way is it going to kick me all over the road? Am I going to come on boost before the turn comes? Which gear should I be in this one? Is it going to spin in this gear? Is it not going to spin in this gear? And all them things, you know, some people might think it makes the drive a little bit more annoying, but it makes it so much more fun because it's like, you know, it's the unknown. The unknown is also terrifying yet beautiful. Wow, I like this car, man. Tommy's been left behind again. Hashtag Hondas are slow. <laughs> I'm only joking, everybody. I'm only, I'm only joking, I am. I'm just not as fast as this. So just before we conclude with the video, I've actually dragged Tommy, uh, Ash, out of Tommy's car uh, because I need him to do something for me. Now, I'm really intrigued to know what this boosts to at top end. While I'm at the top end, there's so much, there's so much going on. I can't actually see what the what it what it's boosting to. So Ash, you're gonna tell me what that reads, okay? So I yeah, want to yeah. know what it's boosting to when I'm on full boost. You ready? Not yet, not yet. <laughs> what did it What did it go to? Fifty. <laughs> From a supercharger. Oh my god. And and I didn't, I didn't keep traction, in, so it's probably higher than that because we slipped traction at the top end because the roads are wet. Man, this car's sick. Oh my god, it's so good. Hats off to Dave, and he's such a modest guy about it as well. It just makes it so much better. So we're gonna head back to the green light uh, office now, uh, and I'm gonna conclude the video there.